Hello everyone, my name is Salah and today along with my colleague Stefan I will be presenting our research on human control of complex objects. Humans are extremely skillful at manipulating complex objects. By complex I mean objects that have nonlinear, underactuated dynamics and sometimes even internal degrees of freedom. That being said, there has been a limited number of studies that have investigated this problem, and those studies have mainly focused on developing descriptive models that identify that humans seek to optimize some smoothness criterion of the kinematics. One control strategy that has been developed in the engineering literature to control objects with flexible dynamics is input shaping, which relies on a sequence of impulses that excite and then cancel transient oscillations in the internal dynamics of the objects. This input shaping strategy closely resembles control through primitives, which is our main hypothesis in how humans control and physically interact with complex objects. Inspired by how humans manipulate a cup of coffee, we designed an experiment where the subjects interacted with a carton pendulum system in a virtual environment through a robotic manipulandum that provided haptic feedback. Subjects were instructed to move the cup from the start box and arrive at the target box with minimal terminal oscillations in the ball. Data analysis revealed that, contrary to the predictions of the optimization-based models, the velocity peaks were not equal. The second observation also contradicted the predictions of the optimization-based models, which predicted that the minimum velocity between the two peaks would become more negative as the movements became faster, something which was not actually observed in the data. Hi, my name is Stefan. To investigate the role dynamic primitives play in this task, we performed simulations with an array of control models and input shaping variations. Physical models contained stiffness and damping elements to reproduce the impedance of the hand interacting with the cup. Models were simulated with and without a feedforward force input term. The model with hand impedance has two modes, so input shaping requires four impulses to completely cancel out residual oscillations. We also simulated a version of input shaping that generated impulses based only on the hand's impedance without the pendulum dynamics, mimicking a scenario in which subjects planned their motion without knowledge of the object's flexibility. Finally, we allowed impulse timing to vary in some models, representing human error in formulating or executing the ideal input shaping plan. Best fit stiffness, damping, and timing variability values were computed by a nonlinear optimization that minimized root mean square error between simulated and observed hand kinematic variables. Across models, those that included a feedforward force input term and allowed for impulse timing variability performed better than those that did not. Generating input shaping impulses based only on a single mode generated trajectories that fit the data better than the full multi-mode input shaping and selected best fit impedance values much closer to what is typically observed in the upper limb, namely lower hand stiffness. This evidence supports the hypothesis that humans simplify object manipulation by composing some movements and hand impedance. The difference between single and multimode input shaping outputs can be observed in this example. We would like to thank our funding sources for making this work possible, as well as our colleagues in the Action Lab and the Newman Lab. Thanks for listening.